Hi, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to build a coin pusher for quarters and pennies. We'll start with all the pieces laid out on the table. And as traditional would have it, we'll look at our 3D model before we start assembling so you can get a plan of attack. The first thing we'll focus on is the pegboard, which I've already assembled. It's three layers, acrylic, uh, spacer layer, and then the backing board with a whole bunch of nuts and bolts assembled as the pegs. I've already done this, and my acrylic sheet is a little short because it was a scrap size, and why cut a whole new sheet when I had something close to what I wanted to use? That's why it's a little short in this video. No big deal. Take this assembly and stick it into the side of the coin assembly body. Then we'll put the coin chute bottom and side in. And finally the pusher board, which you can see has a lot of cutouts for specific reasons. Put the other coin pusher body door on. And the bottom just for stability. You can also put the front plate on. And as you can see, there's cutouts for the or trap cutouts and we have two different plates we can utilize these cutout plates so the house can win money or you can just cover them up and pretend they're not there which makes the game a little bit more fair to the player not necessarily the house but this is the stack up layer we're going to use at first we'll just have them the traps open the scraper board will insert but first we have to put spacers underneath it so we have space for the dozer and we're just gonna put number six bolts in to keep everything in place I'll also use number six bolts to keep the body stiff and then we can insert the clear windows as well on the side The dozer is just two pieces sandwiched together. This is all cut from the same wood so we can get pretty close tolerances that we can slide. So as you can see, when the dozer makes the movement from the rotation, it converts it to linear movement. But our problem is that it's gonna go side to side. Now you see these oblong cutouts. We're gonna put bolts in them with F625ZZ bearings. These are really inexpensive if you buy them on eBay. We're gonna shim them up with two M5 washers. That way the flange will kind of latch onto the top of the pusher and keep it from moving up and down. And we'll insert four of these bearing sets to capture the linear motion of our dozer. Now for calibration, you want to center the dozer so there's just a gap on both sides of the scraper assembly and clamp that in place so it doesn't move. Next, we'll take some, these are T-nut inserts, but you can use regular washers, I just have them or nuts and washers, and we're gonna fasten these to the bottom of our bearing bolts. When you've got washers on the bottom of all those, then you can push them so they're touching the dozer assembly and tighten down, and this should lock the dozer so it can only move back and forth. So now you can see when our circular motion gets inserted, it converts to linear motion, and our dozer doesn't catch or, or rack itself to get stuck. The motor top assembly is done with these spacers, but you can just use a bolt with any kind of spacer. I've got threaded spacers because it's a common part I stock for other things. Here's our stepper motor. Again, we're using a stepper motor just because it has a really easy way to mount to stuff. And this is a dampener that comes with some steppers depending on where you buy them. And we're going to really need this to dampen or reduce some vibration made by the stepper motor because it's gonna resonate in our wood frame anyway, and it will just make things a little bit quieter and also vibrate the body a lot less so you don't get that vibration that pushes or helps coarse coins over the ledge. Make sure you insert this the right way. We only have one hole that I made for the wires to come out. And we'll mount the stirrer using some wheel mount that I found on a website. And I'm just gonna mount it to a clear plate and then I have a bolt with a nut tightly inserted that acts as our stirring shaft. And that's really all it is. I'm gonna remove 
the sleeve I made for this because it's a little bit too tight for this cut. And then we'll just mount the motor assembly onto it. And as you can see, when we the motor rotates, that slot lets it move back and forth and you only get back and forth motion with circular motion. And here's that scraper with the dozer. Final assembly, we'll put the top on and you can add more nuts and bolts to keep the body stiff and secure. And you can see this pegboard was made for quarters and it's working just fine so far. I'm gonna jump to an already assembled coin pusher so we can get an overview of the electronics before we get into any detail. This coin pusher is already painted. It's a slightly revised version but I just want to cover the electronics briefly, not go into any new details that I haven't covered in other videos, and we'll show some options like that bell you can add with an addition to a tilt sensor. The first thing is the small relay, which is what the bell is getting clicked on and off with, just a simple Arduino one on eBay. Here's the simple circuit with basic features, and then we can jump to the full build, which includes the relay area for the alarm, I am showing a transistor, and the switch and tilt LED. If the previous schematic is a little too complicated, we can simplify things by using an, an integrated chip specifically for driving motors. We're going to focus on the L293D, which is a dual H-bridge motor driver, or commonly known as a quad half H-bridge motor driver. You can find lots of these Arduino motor shields on eBay, but I do want to point out there are many types. First and foremost, I've connected my motor shield with my Arduino using a bipolar connection setup and I'm powering it with 5 volts that's also going to power the Arduino. This power supply has enough amperage to power a motor. I want to point out since these motor shields were an open source design way back in the day, I'm thinking 5 or 6 years, they've been revised and many different people who's adopted them have revised them in different ways. So it's really important that whatever you're buying you can find a version number and hopefully dig a schematic for it. I had a little trouble finding that since I bought a very old revision of this motor driver board and I had to look at this schematic with a grain of salt, like test things and verify that they're still connected like this. We're using the Adafruit motor driver that's for this version 1 shield and it's important that we know the differences between a bipolar and a unipolar motor. I have lots of unipolar motors because they can be bipolar motors, as in they can be connected that way, but bipolars cannot be unipolar motors. Now using this motor shield, we're going to look at the schematic, and we're only going to focus on one of the dual H-bridge motor drivers. There's two on this board. Let's just look at one, and if we look at our stepper motors, this is how you connect them. The bipolar stepper motor just connects with the two poles like so. And if you have a unipolar stepper motor, which is what I have, just ignore the center tap for each pole and connect the same way. This also has the lights installed, which definitely lights up the play field and gives it a good look. I forgot that button's not wired anything but this button you just hold and it'll run the motions. I should add this circuit has a potentiometer in it which you can dial down or calibrate the feel or speed of that stepper motor which in turn pushes and pulls that lever. It works just like a coin pusher and if you're not convinced I'm gonna show you multiple and multiple angles and different views of this thing in action. I'm real proud of it. This next shot, the camera is touching the case. You're going to hear the vibrations of that stepper motor. Stepper motor is not a great motor to use for a coin pusher because the stepper motor produces a lot of vibrations, but it's what I had.
I made this build flexible. When I was doing research, I found newer coin pushers have a trap built in. So I made that cutout on the bottom board and I'm readjusting the panels so the trap's open and you can see it in action. Oh yeah, if you didn't see it, it's that coin just over the ledge, drops in and it falls, oh, yeah. it falls into the inside, hopefully not on top of all your electronics. Now, this is a plumb bob, it came out of an old arcade that I bought, but it's commonly used in pinball machines to sense tilts. You can adjust the bob up and down and when it touches the side, it makes a contact or completes a circuit and that essentially tells you if the machine's been tilted. Yeah, I know this machine is small and you can just run away with it. The point is for novelty, not for practicality. That's the tilt LED going off. That button just resets the Arduino. So a simple shake or nudge will set the tilt sensor off. And if the pusher's pushing, the tilt will interrupt it, hopefully. Again, just tilt was activated, so it stops the program and it halts it indefinitely. So you'd have to reset it. Now I'm gonna enable the bell, which is super obnoxious, but it's kind of cool still. So as you can see, the coin pusher, not too technical. The hardest part was turning the rotational motion of our motor into linear motion or back and forth with the actual dozer part. I had a bunch of ideas for that, but in the end they were all not as good. And I went with the simplest one, which in turn actually seems to be the best one for now. By the time you see this video on my website, I should have kits up and ready. If their kits aren't up, there should be at least a spot on my website that shows this video and it'll give you a PayPal link to buy the kit, which that kit is gonna be this ladder version in the video, which is the most revised, most up-to-date, and that just has a couple extra hole cutouts and things adjusted than this first one that I showed you when I was assembling. The website link is in the description, or if you're not looking at descriptions ever on YouTube, this is the website, retrobuildgames.com. And as always, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Oh, and yeah, I know I look like the dude from Vsauce. I can't help it.